guys, this episode we are revisiting Friendly ID because I added a feature of Friendly ID to Go Rails yesterday and I wanted to cover this. It is the history feature of Friendly ID and it allows you to take um, your model, mine is episodes, and I have titles for those and it converts that to a slug for the URL. And whenever you make a typo, you might need to update that slug to fix the typo, but you want the old one to still work. Now, if you didn't have some sort of history, there's no way for you to redirect that unless you did a manual thing in your routes file or something, and that would be um, very annoying to maintain. So we're gonna be talking about the history feature of Friendly ID um, today. So let's go and add this to our application. We'll run bundle add Friendly ID. Then we will run the Rails generate Friendly ID command and that will install a migration and an initializer for us. So we'll run Rails generate friendly ID and that creates the migration and the initializer and we can create our model for our example. We'll have title, we'll use that to create a slug. We want the slug to be unique and body is text just for some content and then we'll run Rails DB migrate to create those models. So now that that's all set up, we can go into our app and start configuring this. So let's just open up our posts uh, controller in our browser, and then let's go and open up our code. So the first thing we have to do to enable uh, friendly ID is we extend friendly ID in our model, and then we can call the friendly ID method, and we say title use slugged. And this is the typical example that you will see. And the only other change we have to do is whenever we are doing a find on the model, in order to look up by the friendly ID, the slug, we say friendly.find. And that will give us um, find that will actually query against the uh, slug column instead of the ID column. So that will fix the controllers for that. We can go in to create a new post, but one of the things that I want to point out here is we do not want to submit the slug. If the slug is nil, then Friendly ID will generate one for you. But if we were to submit this, it would be an empty string and Friendly ID would say, okay, that's fine, you can use that. And we wouldn't get a slug like we want. So let's go into our form and let's say, let's allow you, if the form object is persisted, to update the slug, but you can't define it when you create the post originally. So we'll say hello world here. We'll create our post and it will take us to post slash hello world instead of post slash one, two, three, or whatever number the database ID is. And you'll see that it generated that based upon the title. It converted it to lowercase, it swapped spaces with hyphens, and it would remove any special characters that aren't valid in a URL for you. So that cleans everything up for you automatically. That's all we really talked about previously. Now to use the history functionality, we just need to go to our post model and add the history functionality in here. And that basically includes that module for us um, so that we can use history. Now the cool thing about this is what if we made a typo in our title and we meant it to be hello world too and we decide to update the slug to match. What we really want is the hello world to still take us to this same blog post. So if we update our post, we'll see that it allows us to use that new slug, but we can still, or we should still be able to access hello world in here. Now it's not going to do that because we just enabled the history feature and it hasn't recorded that old URL anymore. So we have to go and delete this post because uh, we don't have the old uh, slug in the database yet. So let's create a brand new one and test it with that. So we'll say, hello, go rails. We'll create a body. We'll have hello, go rails. What if we said, um, hello, go rails 2021. And we wanted this to be the year. So we update the post and we can see it is on the new slug, but because of the history function, when we created it the very first time, it kept track of hello go rails as the slug and it recorded that. So we actually have two places in our database 
that record the slugs. We have our post model, and we have the friendly ID slugs model that's internal to the gem that we don't really see in our application, but it's keeping track of all of those slugs because of including this module here. So in our database, when we hit this uh, URL and we look up this, we're not going to find a post for it, so it's going to fall back to the friendly ID slugs table and query for that instead. Let's open up the Rails server logs and take a look at what it does. So here you can see it, it's first looking for a post where the slug is hello go rails and it doesn't find it. So it tries again by interjoining friendly ID slugs and matching the polymorphic uh, association there and looking for a slug with hello go rails there. And it finds it and then it can open the, um, or it can return that post that was associated with it because it is uh, using that polymorphic association to find that correctly. So it's going to make a second query to find that old route if it exists. Um, and if it finds the route immediately, it doesn't need to make that second query. So that's how that works, and it works very well, except we'd really like to see if this matches the new URL or not, and we can redirect to the new URL if you're on the old one. So the way to do that is actually pretty simple. Go into our post controller, and after um, we find the post, all we need to do is see if params ID, and we'll check if this is equal to the post's current slug. So we're basically comparing hello world to hello world two or whatever, and if they don't match, we want this to be not equals. If they don't match, we're going to redirect to the post. So that's going to redirect to the new version of that and the browser is gonna see, hey, we need to actually update that URL. Now we can do a status here of moved permanently so that that is going to start getting indexed by Google and DuckDuckGo and your search engines, and it's gonna start making um, this as the primary version of it. So it knows that there's two pages, we changed the URL, and we want this version to actually be the one that everyone goes to instead of the old one. And so that's useful for the search engines to start telling you, hey, this doesn't, this seems to be the old version, and we want users to be on the new version. And that's all we have to do. So if we go and refresh now, we're gonna be redirected to the new version, Hello Go Rails 2021. And that is all there is to it. Now the question you might ask is, what happens if I wanna reuse that old um, route? So if we say Hello Go Rails here, and we type a new one, what it will do is see that, hey, that URL was already taken, so we're gonna generate a unique URL here, and it uses like a UUID here to append it to the end so it's unique, and that makes it so that these don't conflict with the old Hello Go Rails. Now you might want to be able to go and replace that um, and update that old slug that's stored in the database and actually reuse it. GitHub does that for example, so if you rename your project it will redirect until you want to use it again and you can actually go and override that old um, slug that's in the database. So the way we can implement reusable old um, slugs in this is actually to add a slug generator class option to our friendly ID line. So we can define our own class here and I'll call it um, reusable slug generator. We'll add a class called reusable slug generator inside of here. And this actually needs to inherit from a friendly ID slug generator class. And we will require that class up here so we can actually access it, friendly ID slug generator. And what's cool about this is that um, you can just pull up the slug generator in the source code for this on GitHub. It's a very simple class. It initializes, you get a scope and a config. Um, the scope is actually like the post, um, like for example in our, in our app we're using the post model. It's basically the post uh, dot all. 
and then it uses that to call post.exist by friendly ID. And this is given candidates whenever you save a record, it will go and run this class called generate, see if it can find any um, valid names for this. And if it can't, then it will return nil and then it will get the uh, UUI appended to the end of it. So this is attempting to see, hey, um, are there any in the database using our generator logic? So we have our um, candidates here and we need to just override this available method. So I'm gonna go and grab this. Um, and because we're inheriting, we already have those methods already on our copy, but our available method is going to be where we change things. So what this is doing, like I said, is saying exist by friendly ID is actually querying the friendly ID slugs table and looking for any slugs there. But that's all of the ones, including the ones in history. And we really just want to ask for the current ones that are in use. So what we can do is take the scope and say unscoped, where slug is the slug, and we can call exists on it. And this is going to basically call post where slug is slug dot exists. And that means that we're basically look only at the active slugs in use. So those are always going to be stored on your model itself. So on our post, on our post model, for example. And that's all there is to it. So let's go try this out and see if it works. We'll go and create a post called hello go rails. I've already deleted all of the stuff in our database. So we can have a fresh start here. We'll have hello go rails new. And this will be, let's just change this text here to new so we can determine the difference between them. So we'll open this up and we'll open hello go rails. It redirects us to hello go rails new because it saw that uh, record in the history. And if we were to go and create a new post called hello go rails, this one's the brand new one, then we will still get the URL that we would expect. We're reusing that history one. So now we are pointing to hello go rails and our history of hello go rails. So if we were to open this up, we will go directly to the brand new post. So we basically added a new record that uses the old slug and we've added another record into our friendly ID slugs history. So we actually are allowed to have duplicates in there and we can do that by running friendly ID slug pluck and we can grab the ID, the slug and the sluggable type and sluggable ID. And you'll see in here that we have two hello go rails entries in there. And when we're querying for those um, records, it's going to find the most recent one first. So it's keeping track of history of these URLs forever. So we're able to see that, that hello go rails pointed to two different things at two different times, and those are just kept in there for reference. So now we can even go and say, let's go and edit this one to be hello go rails brand new. Well, we'll save that. And if we go to hello go rails, it takes us to hello go rails brand new. So all of that works and continues to redirect us to the correct place. It's actually really, really awesome. And there's a lot of functionality in the friendly ID gem that just isn't super well documented. So these are like really, really powerful things that you can use to make very, very nice permalink history and reusability and all of that. However you wanna make it work, there's quite a few different use cases that you might have here. For example, in some cases, like if you're building a blog like Medium, you may never want those to be reused in case um, two users, uh, where one writes one and then this other user takes their, their old place. You don't necessarily want that, but it's okay in a case like GitHub where everything's namespaced to the user. So if they already own it, no one else can create a repository in there. So it's okay if you reuse it in this case, but maybe not in a situation like WordPress or Medium. So that's it for our advanced look into Friendly ID. It's really interesting to come back to a gem like this after all of these years building screencasts and Friendly ID still works phenomenally well. So if you need rich um, friendly IDs in your URLs, this is the only gem to look for. It does its job really, really well. 
You might need to dive into the source code to learn some of these tips and tricks that you can do with it, but it is very powerful. And actually, a lot of these things are hard to think of as you're building this feature out for the first time. So it's really useful to use Friendly ID from the get-go because you have all of this knowledge about edge cases built in, which is nice. So that's it for this episode. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.